How are the elites striking back? Because it strikes me that they're kind of playing with fire here. You know, one of the things that we see a lot on this program here is working class and black voters very upset about the border situation, for example, because they feel like this is a direct attack on them. But you've got all these people coming in to the country. That's real recipe for, you know, social dysfunction, to say the least. And, of course, also you have these legal cases and the weaponization of the Justice Department and all the, the courts against Donald Trump. All of these things strike me as very dangerous games for the elites to be playing to try and hold power. What do you think? Where does this go? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think the elites are desperate. I think is what I said before. You look them in the eye and what you see is fear. They know they're, they're behind the eight ball, as we say here in the States. They basically are in deep trouble. And, um, and they are... They, they're very entitled. They believe that they, they they should rule in perpetuity. They believe in something called our democracy. I yeah. love that phrase. Very, very possessive. Um, so they are playing with fire. I think they are playing with fire. Um, where do we go from here? I, I never make predictions. But <laughs> let me tell you, I, I have been here before uh, as an old person, as I said before. Um, this... Biden reminds me very much of Jimmy Carter. What happened with Jimmy Carter was it was a certain moment when the American people said, okay, not this guy. They had no um, uh, judgment on who was running against them or it was basically not this guy. This yeah. election is not going to be about Donald Trump. The, the Democrats wanted to be about Donald Trump. It's going to be about Biden. And, and, and if my gut instinct is right, not a prediction, just an instinct, he doesn't have a chance. Yeah, I think, look, I think you're right, and I think the Jimmy Carter analogy really, really holds right down to the trouble we're having with Iran. It's amazing how history repeats itself. But finally, I just want to ask you one quick question, too. You, I'm really curious about how you write that the Israel and anti Semitic, anti Israel and anti Semitic protests in the U.S. and elsewhere are kind of about seeing Jewish people as stand ins for normies. What, what do you mean by that? How do these protests reflect this fight? We well, have to understand who the protesters are, right? A lot of them are, you know, there's a class that are very pro Palestinian. The vast majority know nothing about Israel or Palestine. They they basically come from the fever swamps of the identitarian and anti capitalist um, uh, left. And, and, uh, Basically, they see in the Jews, number one, they're the white occupiers and the white colonizers in, in Israel. But number two, uh, to complete the stereotype, they are the, the swinish capitalists that run this evil system that they would like to destroy. So mm. in the person of the Jew, the Jews, of course, no matter where you stand, whether it's Nazi Germany or democratic America, you end up being the scapegoat, right? Well, uh, right or left, the scapegoat. And that's basically what's happening here. The, the person of the Jew serves as um, basically the, the, the focus of resentment for a lot of these uh, leftist uh, progressives.